675, out of level 6, zero for 100. 775, count to flight level 200. 200, zero 675. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another episode of Airbus A320 Simulator Series. In this episode, we will do FMGS preparation in continuation to A320 normal operating procedures. If you haven't checked out my previous episodes, check it out from the iCard suggestion in the top corner. So let's get started. FMGS stands for Flight Management and Guidance System. It's a sophisticated system which includes various units and computers. The system is quite fundamental in modern jetliners. It is also known as FMS by many other aircraft manufacturers around the world. FMGS automates various in-flight tasks and calculations and hence reduces the workload on the cockpit crew to a great extent. FMGS includes two flight management guidance computers, two multi-purpose control display unit, one flight control unit and two flight augmentation computers. As you see in the flow chart, this is how the units interact with each other in the system. The flight crew uses MCDU and FCU to interact with the flight management guidance computers. FMGC has two parts. Flight management part of FMGC controls parameters like navigation, flight planning, performance optimization, predictions and display management. While flight guidance part on the other hand provides flight directors, autopilot and auto thrust commands. So back in the cockpit, let's prepare the FMGS for departure by interfacing through MCDU and FCU. So this is our MCDU on its menu page. These are the slew and function keys for various pages. And these are the alphanumeric keys to insert the data into the scratch pad. And these are the line select keys on either side of the screen to enter the scratch pad data into the main display. For the systematic interface, we use famous mnemonic diff strip. D stands for data, we press the data key. Now we go to position monitor. Now here we check our computed positions by both the FMGC, GPS position by on-site computer and mixed IRS position. And then right here, these are the position deviations from the on-site FMGC position, which shouldn't be more than five nautical miles. Then we press line select key six right to select the navids. Ensure that we don't have any deselected stations unless wound or specified in no TAMs. Then we go back to the data page and check aircraft status. We check the aircraft type and series, engine type and check the validity of NAV database cycle because each AIRAC cycle is valid for 28 days. By the way, data in MCDU is color coded wherein blue is for modifiable and selectable data, green is for non-modifiable and active data, white is for titles, minor messages and symbols. Amber boxes are mandatory to be filled Amber messages are for flight crew action required and important messages. Magenta is for constraints and max altitude. Next in the sequence is init page, which is initialization page A. So on the top left, we have box to insert company route. With this, the flight plan is loaded with the help of data link function via A cars, which I will not be using today for the purpose of this video. Now let's enter our departure and destination, which is Victor Oscar Bravo Lima to Victor India Delta Papa, which is New Delhi. So this is the company route detected. I don't intend to use this for the purpose of basics. I will manually insert all the data. Let's return and we'll enter our alternate, which is Victor India Juliet Papa for Jaipur. Then we enter call sign Alpha India Charlie 505. Insert. Next is cost index, uh, which is a ratio of cost of time to cost of fuel. It differs based on the airline policy. In short, the faster you want to fly, higher the cost index, higher the fuel consumption. Cost index is directly proportional to the cost of time. I'm going to use 22. Cruise altitude, flight level 350. Temperature as per flight plan, which is minus 55. After that, we press IRS in it to reconfirm the aligned coordinates. Return back. Proper pose altitude according to flight plan which is 480. And the ground temperature of 27 degrees at the time of departure. Next in sequence is flight plan page. Select the departure airport. Departure. Runway 09 or right is the expected runway for departure. Then we select the expected standard instrument departure let E7 Charlie for today. Then press temporary insert. Now slew down the routing. Here we have flight plan discontinuity. From LATID we are going to do the lateral revision for the planned route. Select A base. 
Now Airway Quebec 22 will take us to Hotel India Alpha which is Hyderabad VOR Then we take Whiskey 20 leading us to Bravo Papa Lima which is for Bhopal Then we take Quebec 24 to our final waypoint Bavox Then we temporarily insert the route now slew down to the route at Delhi we are going to select the arrival runway which is expected to be ILS 290 our star is Bavo 5 Charlie temporary insert now we shall set the route to alternate from our destination in case of any exigency line select key on departure departure runway is expected to be 290 no standard instrument departure will be direct to waypoint Ugolu. Now let's set the arrival uh, runway, which is expected to be ILS 27 Zulu via star Igol 1 Alpha. Temporary insert. Now we slew up to Igolu and uh, clear the discontinuity. Temporary insert. Let's try to retrieve the wind data. We'll do the vertical revision, wind data, and request. Let's go back and check the flight plan on ND. Switch to plan mode and range to 40. Now we have a better view. Now we need to check the track and distance from point to point and the final distance of 958 nautical miles according to the operating flight plan. The blue one is for go around and our departure for alternate uh, from our destination, Delhi. Okay, moving ahead, we have uh, secondary flight plan next. So this is an additional flight plan apart from the active which is stored and is available for the activation as and when required by the flight crew. Secondary flight plan comes handy commonly in three different situations. First is that you plan your route for alternate when there are chances of getting diverted. Second situation is when the ATC gives out last minute change for the set of the active runway. And the third situation is when you plan to return back to departure airfield in case of in-flight emergency right after takeoff. So let's prepare the secondary flight plan for the third condition which is immediate return to the departure airport which is Bangalore. We copy the active flight plan. Okay, we have the wind data. We'll clear the message. Now copy the active and modify the flight plan. We'll do the lateral revision for the suitable point of return which is Bravo Lima 701 for this flight. Enter the new destination Victor Oscar Bravo Lima. Insert. Press line select 6 left. Arrival. And expected runway for arrival is ILS 09 right. Then we select the applicable star which is Tilu 7 Echo. So the plan is inserted. Now we go to the performance page of the secondary flight plan. Press next phase. We go to the approach phase. Uh, keep this phase ready for the uh, quick arrival. Let's enter the current weather data. QNH is 1013. Outside air temperature is 27 degrees. Winds are 60. I 6 knots transition 7000 enter the runway minima which is 3174 full flap configuration next we go to go around phase and enter our thrust reduction and acceleration minimum thrust reduction is of 400 feet above the runway elevation while the thrust acceleration is of uh, 800 feet above the runway elevation it could also be more than that depending on the company policy so I'm going to use thrust reduction of 500 feet and acceleration of 800 feet above the runway elevation which comes to 3470 and acceleration 3770. Insert and then we have engine out acceleration which is 1500 feet above the runway elevation. So that is going to be 4470 and insert. Now next in the sequence is rad nav page. Hard tune the Bangalore VR, Bravo India Alpha. Now let's cross check the VOR on ND. So as we see both our VORs are correctly tuned to Bravo India Alpha. We'll enter the radial for latitude which is 012. Then next we go to init B page, press init and then horizontal slew. So in this page we enter the plan zero fuel weight, block fuel and zero fuel CG which we get from the load sheet. Well it's acceptable to enter the expected values to get the prediction while your load sheet arrives. But this data needs to be carefully entered as our various speeds like flap and slat retraction speed, green dot speed and VLS are computed from the values we enter here. On top left we have taxi fuel, we'll change it to decimal 3 as planned. Are waiting for the load sheet now? Looks like we have it. Let's open the AOC messages, ATSU, AOC menu, received messages. 
This is our slot notification. No delay is expected. Okay, load sheet. We check the date, sector, Bangalore, Delhi, registration, Echo Delta, Charlie. Zero fuel weight is 53.4. Check off fuel 10.3. Check off weight 63.7. Then we have trip fuel, landing weight, passenger load. Our max ZFW is 30.6 and our max TOW is 28.5. With the cabin announcement out there, it looks like our boarding is complete. Block fuel is 10.6. Now it's time we enter the values in our need B page. ZFW is 53.4 and zero fuel weight CG is 30.6 and the block fuel is of 10.6. Insert it. Now we see our onboard computers working on the fuel prediction. So our takeoff weight is 63.7 tons and 58.3 is the landing weight. And headwind component of 6 which is minus 6. Trip fuel is 5.5. Five and reserve of 5%. One ton for alternate final time of 30 minutes and the extra fuel of 1 hour 21 minutes. And MDF is 2 tons. Once we are done with our performance calculation, we are good to insert the takeoff data. We do that in performance page, which is also the next thing in the sequence. Looks like we have a revised load sheet. Now our zero fuel weight has been revised to 53.6 and takeoff weight is 63.9. 84 plus 3 passengers on board. Next page, our revised zero fuel CG is 30 decimal line and revised takeoff CG is 28 decimal line. Let's quickly do the corrections now. Okay, now let's move to our performance page and here we enter all the takeoff data. Let's enter our calculated V speeds. Our V1 is 137, VR is 141, V2 is 143. Transition altitude for Bangalore is 7000. Thrust reduction is 3470. Acceleration is 3770. Engine out acceleration is 4470. It's going to be a full length departure, so no takeoff shift. Okay, flaps is 1 and THS is uh, down 0 0.1. Flex is 52. Okay, after the takeoff data is set, we can go to the progress page and check the cruise, which is flight level 350. Optimum is flight level 355. Nav accuracy is high, estimated to be of 0 0.09 nautical miles. For the quick reference, we'll enter Victor Oscar Bravo Lima, 09 right. It comes handy with information like bearing and distance in case you want to return back to the base. Our FMGS preparation is complete. Once the pilot flying is done with his preparation, pilot monitoring cross-checks the whole preparation on his MCDU. Now it's time we set our EFIS and FCU while pilot monitoring continues to cross-check. First on EFIS, QNH1013 set, constraints on, ND mode and range as required. Initial climb to 7000 set, FO side constraint and barrel reference set. Alright guys, this was all for this episode. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for the upcoming episodes. The next one is going to be on engine start and push. For now, goodbye until the next time and stay safe.